Welcome to my channel, I'm Robin Clevitt. I'm at home and I've been living with these temporary front doors for what seems like an age. But I'm making some new ones. They're almost ready and in this video I've tried to pull together some of the footage I did of making those videos. It's certainly not a blockbuster movie, but I hope you enjoy it. And when I come to fit them, I'll probably do another little video about that for you as well. I hope you enjoy. If you're a subscriber, thanks for subscribing. And if you're not, maybe consider it. Thanks very much. So here are the doors. This is what they look like. They're super huge and they're super heavy. They're almost, well, they're actually more than three inches thick. They're 80 millimeters thick and they look the business. They've been stained and sealed and they're all ready now to be installed into the frame, the locks put on, and then the polish will come back and finish them. I've also made handles, which look like this. We made these, let me just unscrew one from its stem. And these will go on the doors like that so they're going to look absolutely awesome so this is a design that becky and i have come up with we trawled the internet like you do to get ideas and then i thought no it's got to be something i've never seen before something totally unique to me and just making those handles all i had was blocks of sapini as big as that and then i used a combination of planes obviously, routers, and that's what we ended up with. You can see how thick that material was. And believe it or not, they took me a whole day to make four handles. So um, probably pretty expensive handles those. Generally I don't make front doors or doors, but in this instance, because I've built the whole house and it's a carpenter's house, the doors needed to be totally unique and different and they're going to be made from Sapili. Now Sapili is a wonderful hardwood and it's got this beautiful stripe that runs through it. Um, it's really stable and it's the ideal product for external joinery, providing that you seal it well and you give it the right kind of treatment. Now, the doors that I'm making consist of a series of mitered frames which are set within the styles and rails. These are the width of the styles and rails, they're quite wide. And then we've got a series of mitered frames. So you've got ever diminishing mitered frames, then with a strip in the middle. And you'll see those as I come along. But this is a model of the mitered frames, a section through the mitered frames. And you can see that, so you've got two different mouldings here. They're basically half lapped, if you like. And the way I'll do it is I'll fix this one, I'll leave that one off, I'll fix that one, I'll leave that one off, I'll fix that one. And then the polisher can polish in the rebates and everything else. And then, we're not, and then we'll polish these ones and then we'll set those in. And so if there's any shrinkage, you won't see any stain that's missing or discoloration or anything like that. So I've got two solid hardwood door blanks here. These are going to form the core. These are already around about the 50 kilo mark. I'm adding another 50 kilos to each door. So they're going to be 100 kilos each. So that's in pounds, that's something like 220 pounds. So they are going to be heavy doors. I'm going to use a special type of hinge, which is concealed. It's a 3D hinge. And I'll show you that as well as I go along. I've got my rod here. And what a rod is, is a full size drawing or a section through. It's probably difficult to see it. The lighting's not brilliant, it's in pencil. So you can see I've got a pair of doors and I've got the models that mock it up so I can see where my panels are, etc. And then I have got a whole heap of machined Supili over here. It's absolutely wonderful stuff. So there's one of the um, sections that forms these mitered frames. And I'm ready to go. So I've cut the door blanks down now and I'm 
putting an 18mm Sapili edge all the way around the doors. Now the idea is this edge is then covered by the styles and rails that go round and bonded to them as well. And when they're playing back, it'll just look like one solid piece. So just as I said, just going around gluing these on. Now the important thing is I'm gluing them on and I'm using an 18 gauge brad to fix them on. Um, it'll just be little pinholes. We'll when we do the polishing, we'll just fill those in. And the idea is, is I don't want to get my pins where the hinges are going to be. Now the hinges that I'm using, as I say, they're concealed. Um, they're by a company called Simon's Works, and they basically are like a 3D hinge, so you can you can adjust the door that way, that way, this way, this way, and sort of uh, up and down as well. So it's similar to using a cabinet hinge on a kitchen. You get that lovely movement in them, unlike a butt hinge where once it's set, it's set. And butt hinges are great, but you know, I'd need some big butt hinges on here, maybe four on each door. But I like the fact that with the other ones, you know, I've got this lovely flexibility of working to given dimensions and having the flexibility to tweak them. Even in the future, if there's any shrinkage or movement, I can adjust the hinges. So I'm going to get on and glue this on now. So I'm using a good quality waterproof adhesive. It's pretty academic, the fact it's waterproof, to be fair. Um, they're not going to be that exposed to the moisture or rain. They will be exposed to the outside atmosphere, but they are going to have a covered way, which is going to stop the rain and most of the sunshine getting on them and doing the damage that that, that can do together. You know, you've got, you've got light and you've got moisture, and it, sometimes you get a bit of uneven shrinkage and movement. You want to eliminate that as much as possible. So let's get a nice bit of glue on there. We'll give that a little spread out there. We want to get as much on there as possible to make it work. So I've got some of these soup lamps, which I got from eBay. When you're gluing two surfaces together, you want to basically get all the air out and squeeze that glue, rub it back and forwards. Oh yeah, that's absolutely perfect. And just the suction of that is helping me now. And then I shall get these clamps, slot them in, tighten them up, start here. I'll leave one virtually fixed. Now I've got this lipping about half a millimetre thicker than the door. Now these plywood door blanks, when they're manufactured, they're sort of cut, sanded, pressed, bonded together. There is actually some undulation. If you put a dead flat surface on them, you get some undulation. So you've got to allow for that a little bit. You can't, you know, if you set your lipping exactly to 44 millimetres or whatever the door blank is, you might find that it's a little bit shy in places. So I find it's better to actually make it a tiny bit proud and just clean it back. The combination of planing and sanding. So I'm gonna, I've got a rod here with the hinge positions marked on. I'm just gonna put a tack in either side. One there, and one here. Obviously, the face of the door is being covered, so I'm not that fussed about the clamp making any marks. They're a really solid clamp. I've got this nice bit of adjustment on them. And again. Couple more brads above the hinge point here. And then get down the other end. I find these a lot easier than sash cramps because obviously they're a bit clumsy and I can just keep shifting these along. And those brads absolutely hold it steady as anything. There's no movement in it. One here. One up over the bottom hinge. 
Bingo. It'll clean off. So that's it, I'm just going to clean all these up, both doors now, I'll start on that one because that one's been going off for a good hour or so, clean that all back, um, inspect it all, make sure I'm happy with it, it's nice and flat, keep it flat which is the other crucial thing as well, and also in the, of an evening when I'm stacking these, I'm stacking them um, corresponding face to face, so if they, if they have any movement they'll move together and when they're opening up they'll be relative to one another as well. You cannot keep things flat and straight forever. You just got to think ahead. If you're storing doors and that sort of stuff, don't just lean them up somewhere, let them bend like that. Don't have them unsealed with moisture on one side and heat on the other. It ain't gonna help. It's gonna go wrong. So make sure you kind of think of the atmosphere you're working. Incidentally, someone asked a question via the comment about sealing doors and the rest of it and they're gonna move. Yes, they will move, but if you've got a humidity controlled environment and an unsealed door, so you've got the moisture levels at a consistent rate or the humidity at a consistent rate, good ventilation, then it will be fine. Um, it's where you've got fresh plastered walls or decorators coming in, there's lots of moisture knocking around or the building's drying out, it's fatal. So seal your work up, get it covered up, Get it all sort of like protected because you're going to go back and redo it and that is a nightmare.